Ah, my beautiful old Panasonic PTAE700E. 13 years old now, or thereabouts. Quite groundbreaking in its day, because it had HDMI, SCART, which I never used, component, which I did use, and this video, which is a waste of time, as we all know. Still, perfect in every way, except for the fact that it doesn't work. So, it's been replaced with the absolute mother load of all home theatre projectors. That's right, so I'm now the proud owner of an Epson EHTW9200, but most importantly, this little fella here, W, which means it's wireless. So this is a bit of an unboxing, a bit of a test. So, what do we get? CD, obviously no paper manuals anymore. All right. A little bit of stuff on warranty, power adapters, two pairs of glasses. Now the important thing with these glasses is unlike the Sony competitor, which is also about the same sort of money, these ones, which are um, also RF glasses, um, basically comply with the RF standard for 3D glasses, which means that you can pick these up for about 30 bucks a pair, not Epson ones, but off, off market ones. You can pick them up for about $30 a pair, and um, whereas the Sony ones you've got to buy from Sony and they're about $130 a pair. Now very intelligently this actually comes with handles so you can pick the whole projector up like this. Very hard to do with only one hand or without a hand free I should say and it comes out in this little kind of neat carry case. Now first things first, let's do a bit of a size comparison. This is the old PTA700E, and you can see that it is absolutely dwarfed by the Epson. So, it's bigger in absolutely every, every regard. So what that means is I've got to work out how it's gonna fit on my old Vogel bracket with all of those cables, which are now redundant because this is the wireless version. Now apart from this being THX certified deep black, full HD 1080p and with HDMI, it also has, this is basically, the, this is the back, very obviously, and if you only want to use this in wireless mode and just have your power feed there, then you can leave that very neat black cover on. But, like me, if you want to actually plug a couple of things into it, you do get two discrete HDMI ports, you get component, you get composite, you get PC D sub 15 and a 12 volt trigger out an RS232. Now at the front here you also get this little yellow um, essentially it, it, it's, a, it's a little plug or a cork that stops the lens shifting in service. So we've got, uh, we've got focus, we've got zoom and we've got lens tilt and shift or the disc manual into a hard copy version which is 106 pages, it's very detailed, it goes through uh, everything that you'd expect including calibration, on-screen menus, gamma, I mean this thing is so complex you can just set it up for anything you want and of course the absolutely fabulous part, the wireless connection. Okay so that's the wireless transmitter and this is the remote. The remote is pretty big, yet another big remote, it's got a backlit function which you won't be able to see in the day but basically you get a button for every dedicated feature which plenty of that sort of information online now the beauty of this one is that it also supports not only HDMI but also HDMI 5 uh, MHL which is basically a protocol for mobile phones um, now if I go around the back here you'll see that there are four HDMI inputs but very intelligently it also provides an HDMI output as well. So, if you're plugging an HDMI cable into your projector, you probably don't want to run the projector all the time. You probably also want to run that back out to a TV. So that's what the HDMI out does. It picks up the, um, the signal from, from this, one of four HDMI signals, and latches onto that, and it'll output that to a television. Fed this with some power, it's winking. And in a moment, that front lens element which is powered, a little dust curtain there, should open up. Come on. 
there we go, hello. And obviously, it'll start to power up. Now, this does have a brightness of 2500 lumens. Now, that is extremely bright. The old Panasonic, by comparison, had a contrast ratio that was about a tenth of this one, about 5,000 to one, not sort of in the whatever this is, 70,000 or 300,000 to one or something berserk. But also, the Panasonic was only a thousand lumens and it was really only good for nighttime theatre watching. So, whereas this one, I should be able to watch it during the day, which is what today is, a day. Okay, so this is a comparison. Basically, I've got HDMI going oh, with our favourite blue people. Um, and that's a very cheap Aldi 46 inch TV going in the background there. Could you watch this during the day? Absolutely. So basically you can get an idea of comparative brightness. Um, TV at this stage really has got better blacks, better colours. Uh, but if I draw the curtains a bit, I'm sure. This is just panning over to the, to the screen. If I draw the curtains a bit, I'm sure it will be a whole different kettle of fish. Now what this is set on, is you can just go to colour mode. And it's uh, at the moment it's set on dynamic, which is um, the brightest on eco mode. So if I go to THX, the colours are better for movies, not during the day, but it's um, it is a dimmer picture. Okay, so here we are back to basically dynamic mode, which is bright. Um, curtains are drawn. A little bit darker. Um, look, that is that's absolutely watchable. That's brilliant. It's and the, the definition. If I get closer and closer and closer, I can pick up some wire, even though it's component coming through the TV. But if I get very, 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 very close, you can start to see some screen door effect. But gosh, I've got to be close. You can see that there. I'm about five centimeters away from a hundred inch screen there. So, that used to be an issue. I know the, um, the Panasonic, the PTA700E that I had, used uh, special software to get rid of screen door effect because it was only 1280 by um, uh, 720p uh, HD, not full HD. Whereas this one, of course, is 1920 by 1080. And there is simply no screen door noticeable. Maybe on a 300 inch screen, but not on, uh, not on 100. Now I've just turned this on to, this has an amazing feature where it actually converts 2D films into 3D. So it up converts, you can see that, that there's basically this very noticeable parallax, but if I put the glasses in front, you should see that. So there's a sync now, and even though you're getting a syncing image because of the, um, the frame rate, basically what I see when I put glasses on is an extraordinarily lifelike and detailed. This is a red and uh, green array, not um, they're not active polarization. Uh, an extremely lifelike 3D image. It really, really is good. I, I don't know how they do it, but gosh, it's clever, and it really does work. So it's simply a button that you can convert any single any feed via HDMI. You can convert from 2D to 3D within the projector. The projector does it uh, with its own software, and God, it's sharp. But I suppose it is a $4,000 projector. Now the other thing this projector does, of course, is connects to a PC, so you could use it for gaming. So I'm just uh, just plugged in there to see what it's like flicking through some photos. And again, 100 inch screen. The screen's been put, or the colour mode's been put to um, dynamic, which is the brightest it can go on eco mode. And it really is excellent. Really, really sharp and bright enough Certainly to use as a data projector if you wanted to. Um, otherwise, for gaming.